Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Southern Four Wheel Drive Association Well Tech Net episode. Tonight, we, Mike Morrison is going to talk about jacks. He's going to talk about high lift jacks and ARB's awesome hydraulic jack. Is that right, Mike? That is right. What's up, Facebook world? As everybody knows, during our tech nets, we give away a weekly prize. This week, I have roll bar grab handles, handles from Orange. Um, you got a comment with your name and your club affiliation. Okay, so hello, my name's Al Sweeney. I'm a member of Trick and Traction. Our major sponsor is BF Goodrich. And what we're going to do with BF Goodrich, Mike? All right. So tonight for BF Goodrich, let's get... Um, I've got the secret place. I'm going to hang on there for a little while. Okay. So we'll just comment. What can they win? They can win a set of BFG tires at Dixie Run. So that's when we'll be holding the drawing, a set of five BFG tires up to a 37-inch KO2 or KM3. Okay, so uh, a little bit later in the show, I'll throw a message across the screen with a secret phrase that you've got to comment, and uh, then you'll be eligible to win. The way this grand prize works is every week, you get a chance to put your name in the hat again. If you've been on all 12 tech nets and you've commented with a secret phrase, You'll, your name will be in there at this point 12 times. Okay. Hey, Al. Yes, sir. Is there another way to get in that, too? There is another way to get in that. Um, do you know what that way is, Jay? Yeah, I know what that way is. I was just asking you to, to, to see if there's another way to get in that drawing. Tell us how to do that. Oh, hey, that would be a to to log on to... Southern Four Wheel Drive Association, sfwday.org, and become a direct member. You can become a uh, just a regular member, $10 member, or you can become a premium member, get some cool swag, but then you'll get another drawing for that set of tires at Dixie Run. The individual membership is $10, I think. Yes, and, that's correct. And the premium membership is 50 bucks. Yes. But again, you get a, a lot of neat swag. And some uh, at Dixie Run, there may be some special things going on for premium members. Awesome. Thank you, Al. So, yeah, we're going to talk about high lift jacks and then the ARB jacks, the differences between the two, how to safely use either one. Um, that's what we're going to be focused on tonight and kind of how they work. So I've got my assistants over here with me. They're hanging out. Sarah's going to handle the camera because obviously my hand's going to be tied up with jacks. And Stephen is going to be my assistant inside the vehicle because I have set up um, some options about how to lift a vehicle using both jacks. So as with any TechNet, guys, remember, if you have a question, post it in the comments and preface it with the Q so that uh, we can answer it at the end when we do the Q&A session. Um, Al is going to handle the questions for me tonight so that uh, at the end I can answer them. Again, my hands are going to be tied um, while we're doing this. So I'm going to hand the phone over to my awesome wife, and she's going to flip the camera around. And Al, if there's any problems with uh, my audio, just let us know uh, since I won't be able to see kind of what's going on. All right. So first we're going to talk about the high lift jack. The high lift jack has been around um, for quite a while, since the early 1900s. Um, so a uh, company, the high lift jack company, in, uh, has created the jack, still a family-owned company by the Hara family. And uh, they are still producing these, pretty much the same design since the early 1900s. Not a whole lot's changed. So they have several different models. This particular one is what we call the all-cast model because all the different pieces, the foot, all the uh, running gear here, the standard, and uh, at the top, if there's normally a clamp at the top, is all cast. The other model that they have is what they call a cast steel model, where they have a stamped steel foot, as well as a stamped steel, steel uh, clasp at the top. 
Then they have the extreme model, which is just like the Alcast. It's gray rather than red, but it comes with this top clamp piece. They have different sizes of high lift jacks. They have a 36 inch, a 48 inch, and then a 60 inch. Typically, we recommend carrying a 60 inch because if you've ever had to use a high lift jack, especially on some of these flexi vehicles like uh, Jeep Wranglers um, and highly modified vehicles, a 48 inch high lift jack is not even going to lift a tire off the ground. So you really want to carry a 60 inch high lift jack. And if you've ever had to use one for winching, well, a 60 inch really comes in and makes it nice and easy. So we're going to go over the pieces and parts of this before we kind of get into using it. So you've got the standard which is the different lengths. This particular one's a 60 inch. You've got the handle here, which the high lift jack typically has a handle with a cotter pin in place. I will normally take the cotter pin out and drill out the handle and put in a hitch clasp so I can remove the handle. Uh, but this jack I have not done that with yet. So then the handle goes down right here to the handle keeper. Get a little higher, make it easier to see. Then this piece right here, this little handle clasp, okay, gets bent up a lot of times and people take them off and throw them out. But this is a safety feature uh, that if when the jack is in the down position, you get what they call handle slap, where the handle starts slapping and the jack lets all the way down. This will slow the handle down and sometimes catch it. Doesn't work all the time. They do get bent, but you can buy replacements from high lift jack. Moving down right here. You have the directional selection lever. When it's in the up position, it is able to move up. And then when it's in the down position, that's when it will move down. Now, when I put this in the down position, if there's no weight, okay, on the high lift jack, then the jack will fall to the ground. As long as there is a certain amount of weight here, then when I put it in the down position, it will hold the load. Right now, there's no weight, so it just drops free spool down, okay? And notice when it's in the down position, it just slides up and down the standard for the bar. Well, when it's in the up position, I can lift it up and it holds itself in place, okay? So thinking about that, we always store it in the up position. We never store it in the down position. Now, after that, you've got what they call the pitman arm right here. This is what pivots, lifting the jack up and down. Then right here, you've got a shear pin. The shear pin is rated to 7,000 pounds, okay? Now, if this jack is lifting, and I've never broken a shear pin, um, even doing up-armored Humvees and up-armored Hiluxes military training, but if you shear this shear pin, the great thing about the high-lift jack, and this is why you should only buy the high-lift jack brand, one of the only reasons you should buy the high lift jack brand is it will hold the load. It will not drop it to the ground if you shear the shear pin here. Now, you buy your replacement shear pins from high lift. Don't just go and turn around and put a bolt back in because then you're changing the capacities of the high lift jack. After that, we've got what we call the climbing pins here. These climbing pins are what moves in and out, up and down the bar. Now, these don't necessarily hold the load. This is what the high lift jack uses to change directions and move up and down. So the climbing pins with the springs and the cross pins here, you can rebuild if they get worn out. You can buy a rebuild kit and rebuild this high lift jack. It comes with new uh, climbing pins, springs, cross pins, and a new shear pin. And now you've got a, basically a brand new jack as far as the running gear. Now, with the high lift jack, the reason you have two climbing pins the high lift jack has what they call an upper runner or a big runner, which is the top runner here that the nose of the high lift jack is attached to. And then it has a lower runner right here. This lower runner right here is what pivots and lifts the upper runner as we're lifting up. Now, remember I said that the climbing pins don't necessarily hold the weight. Right here, you've got that lower runner. Watch how it rotates as I drop the handle and clamps on the outer edge of the high lift jack and lifts this up, upper runner up. When I get to that click and I change, it unclamps, but the upper runner clamps and it lifts that back up. So the weight is actually held by the upper and lower runner as they alternate going up or down and they clamp on the outside 
of the bar here. You can notice where the paint scratched off. Okay, there will be witness marks on these bars on the outsides, and that kind of shows where those upper and lower runners have clamped their way up and down. So for the most part, that's pretty much the pieces and parts of the high lift jack you do at the very bottom here have a foot to the high lift jack. The foot, you'll notice it has a long side and a short side because it is reversible. Again, this one has a cotter pin. The extreme does have a hitch pin. Pull the cotter pin out and put a hitch pin in so you can take the foot on and off as needed. Now, um, the last piece that I'll talk about with the high lift jack is what we call the robot's foot, right? This comes with just the extreme jack. This has runners on the backside, and then it's got this bolt pattern right here that you can, uh, with a wing nut that you can normally undo by hand unless you let uh, Hercules or somebody tighten it on too much for you. But this piece bolts onto the bar of the high lift jack. Now, you can see I've got the bottom of the robot foot right here. I can clamp if I put it above or if I put it below the nose. Here, I can actually spread using the high lift jack. That's where the fire departments use the high lift jack. It was the original Jaws of Life, right? Before they had hydraulics that they could carry with them. So um, you also have a hole here and a hole here. These are for bow shackles. You'll notice that it's almost a perfect size for a three quarter uh, bow shackle to fit through. And that's how you would put this up here and attach it to a tree to use it as a winch. And then right here, you've got this little slot. You can actually slide chain through and put it in the slot and it'll hold itself in place. So this is why I recommend getting an extreme jack so that you can get this foot along with it. Uh, because the other clamps or the other little top clevises that they come with reduce the capacities of the high lift jack. Whereas this one gives you the max capacity of clamping, spreading, and winching 5,000 pounds with the high lift jack. So the high lift jack, you notice on the back side here, there's a sticker. Mine's curled up a little bit, but this jack tested to 7,000 pounds, right? Upper 12 inches is rated to 2,660 pounds because it's a 60 inch jack. So up here, the very top 12 inches, you get a reduced weight capacity. Once I lift that high, I should only have about 2,600 pounds on there. But the lower 48 inches, this jack is rated to, test. it's rated, tested to 4,000 pounds for lifting. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, again, the clamping, the spreading, and the winching, 5,000 pounds as long as you have this piece right here. So that's the pieces and parts of the high lift jack. A little bit about the capacities. Again, they're tested at 7,000, but remember, try to stay within that safe range. And if you ever forget what they're rated to, these stickers right here on the back will let you know what they're rated to based on the one you bought. Now, if you're like me, you, you like red, so you buy the all cast and you just add in one of these, some of these capacities will be a little bit off. Okay, but remember that you get the 5,000 pounds with this guy right here. All right, so we'll bring that out in just a minute and use it. But next, we've got the ARB jack. Now, this is a little bit newer, right? Doesn't quite have uh, <laughs> the amount of time that the high lift jack has on the market, but they're pretty cool. I know they're expensive, right? But they do definitely serve a purpose, okay? But we'll get into that when we start using it. So to start off, we'll start at the top. You've got the handle here that you pump to lift the jack. On the back side here, you have the release to lower the jack, right? Let's the pressure off so you can lower the jack. Here, you've got a rubber boot, boot so you can put this right up against your vehicle and it won't damage like the metal will. This is the nose of the jack, okay? So it has a release here. This flips up. This actually will adjust up and down the high lift jack, and you've got notches in the jack body here. And once it's in place, you just tighten it in so you don't eat up the travel like you do with the high lift jack because you have to lift the nose up. You've wasted all that travel, not wasted necessarily, but this one, you can just adjust it right to your lifting point and start lifting from there. Below that, on the foot, okay, 
This is the foot of the jack. It does have a little bit of articulation, but not much. But you'll notice it's got a cutout right here. And this is for de-beating tires. I'm not going to show you guys how to do that today. But maybe if uh, you join a class, you'll see how to de-beat a tire and then reseat a tire with ether. Boy, that's fun. But the foot does rotate. Um, so you can place it where you need it to be and go from there. As far as capacities of this, fairly close to the high lift jack, you can lift 4,400 pounds with this. Okay, so it is the working load limit of 4,400 pounds. Now, uh, the downside to the high lift jack is, or not the high lift jack, but the downside to the ARB jack is you can't do as much with it, right? You're not, you can't use it as a winch because it does not work horizontally. You also uh, can't abuse it quite as much as you can the high lift jack. You can't clamp and spread things with it. Um, so there are some downsides to this, but where I say this fits, I did a demonstration with this with a family at uh, Overland Expo and had a seven-year-old girl lift the front of a Toyota Tundra, a fully upfitted Toyota Tundra, right? So a seven-year-old little girl, little kid, right? lifting the front of a truck. So if you're not going to be using a high lift jack to do all that crazy stuff, why carry one when your entire family can easily operate this? Much safer than the high lift jack. I don't recommend the high lift jack unless you have training to use it because it can be dangerous without the proper training. But this is a lot safer. Um, so you kind of have to decide what your needs are as far as uh, which one you want but we're gonna see how they both work. So let's go over to the front of our uh, Ram Noah, and we're gonna show you how to do some lifting. All right, so with this, we've gotta identify a lifting point of the vehicle. So obviously I don't have a lot of lifting points. I don't have a bumper, you probably have to get closer, but I don't have a bumper here uh, that's metal, right? But it is metal, but it's not strong enough to lift from. So. If you have an off-road bumper, you're looking for a flat shelf that you can grab a hold of. I've got these toe points right here that I can lift from with this jack. I wouldn't necessarily lift from right here with a high lift jack unless I had to, because uh, I could end up damaging my bumper. So if I'm using the ARB jack, I go ahead and I release this nose. I get it close. And once I get it close there, I tighten it back up. Now, I've got to lift the jack, so I just pump the handle a little bit, and it starts to lift up. Now, once I get it kind of secured in place, I've got some safety precautions I have to worry about. First off, number one rule, you got to have gloves. I don't have gloves yet, but I'm going to grab them in just a second. Rule number two is the vehicle has to be secure. Not in park, right? We don't want to put it in park. You can, but don't just rely on that. I need someone inside the vehicle with their foot on the brake, right? Now, if I'm by myself, I can't necessarily do that. Rule number three is chalk the tire, right? Now, I'm lifting from the driver's side corner. So if I can only chalk one tire, maybe I only have a couple of rocks or something to chalk a tire with, I'm going to chalk the opposite rear tire diagonally back from the vehicle. So I would actually chalk the passenger tire in the rear. Now I've already chalked the tires on the vehicle. I've actually chalked three of them um, because I'm going to be moving around lifting from different points. So we can go ahead and lift. And my awesome little 11 year old assistant, Steven, is holding the brakes for me. So I'm going to grab some gloves and we're going to lift. All right. So I put my gloves on here. And again, you know, not as big with the ARB jack, but definitely with the high lift jack. If you don't have gloves on, there's a lot of pinch points and things that can hurt you. But I'm up here. Look at how easy it is to lift this truck. This truck's a 2,500 diesel, right? A lot of weight, but I can easily lift it. I don't have to worry about the handle bouncing back to my face. It's pretty secure. One-handed, I can start to lift this truck up. So if right now I was trying to change a tire, maybe I'm trying to change the driver's side front tire, and I know these companies say liability, right? Don't change a tire using a high lift jack or an ARB jack. I do it all the time. Um, but again, safety first, right? The vehicle's secured. I have someone holding the brake. 
but I've got to lift this truck until a tire gets off the ground. But a lot of people are like, well, what if the truck slides off the jack? Look at how stable we are. We still have the same amount of contact. Three tires are still on the ground, as well as the jack, which makes my fourth point of contact. How many points of contact do you have when you're driving down the trail? Normally four, unless you're flexing too high. So still very, very stable, right? Very stable. So I go through the process, I change my tire or do whatever I've got to do. Maybe I'm just trying to get a traction mat under a tire, but I put the handle all the way down. Now, right here, you've got a two-stage release with this little red button here, right? So this little red button, I can push it down halfway and the truck drops slowly, or I can push it all the way down and the truck drops a little bit quicker. Then just put a little bit of weight on the jack as it slides its way the rest of the way down and it's back fully compressed, right? And I can go back and I can store it again. And I just keep a carry bag and store this in the carrying bag. So that's the benefit to this is how easy it is to use. Again, had a little kid, uh, my boys have used it and lifted the vehicle very easily. If for some reason we were on the trails and I got hurt, Sarah could very easily use this jack to lift the truck and change a tire or do anything she had to do. Um, so that's the benefit to the ARP jack, the safety and the ease of use. All right, so moving on, we're going to go around to the side over here. So now we're going to use the high lift jack. We're going to use the high lift jack to do the same thing. Now, again, I don't have any armor to lift this vehicle from. I don't have sliders. I don't have high lift jack points. So what I can do is, let's say I'm stuck in a hole and I need to get a traction mat under the tire. So I can do that by lifting from directly from the tire. Now, high lift jack makes specific what they call a lift mate. It goes right here and it's a foot close to uh, the tire, right? And I want to center the bottom of the jack with the center of the tire. Once I've done that, jack's I'm going to pull up until I'm tight. Now, positioning with the high lift jack, and this is super important because there, again, there are some safety concerns not used correctly. This is a dangerous tool, but if you use it correctly, it is safe, just like with a lot of stuff that we do off-road. As I'm lifting this, right, my hand here is always on top of the handle, okay? I don't put it underneath where it could slip out. I don't just hold it with a finger, a big solid grip on top. This hand here, when I start, I keep it right here at the top of the standard. I don't put my thumb in here or my hand in here because if the handle slaps back up, ow, ow, ow. So I keep it out of the way. As I'm starting, I'm going to go ahead and place a foot, my foot, on the high lift jack foot until I get the weight on it and it's stable. Now, you notice that I put my left foot against it here and it turns my body away. I do that. You can do it this way. But what tends to happen is you're trying to use your weight and you lean over the jack. And this right here is the no-no zone, right? Don't get in here because now your body's in here. And you could get hurt. So I use the opposite foot because it turns my body away. So as I lift, and again, I'm just squatting from my knees, but as I lift, it actually points my body away from the jack. I do it this way. But as I lift with the high lift jack, it turns my body away. Okay? Keeps my head out of this zone. Okay? Now, once I get good weight on this high lift jack, I don't have to keep a hand here and a foot here anymore. Now I can change and I can start to put some effort because no hydraulics are helping me now. I'm lifting this vehicle, right? And again, I don't want to be all over top of this bar. You can try, if you're a big person, to do the uh, press here, right? And you're pushing this down. But again, it tends to point you in. What I do, because I'm a little guy, is I grab here, fully extending my arms, 
hands on top, and I just take a step back, right? Notice my chin is not here, but it's back here, arms extended. So again, just a step back. So I'm keeping my chin out of this zone, okay? I'm back here fully extended. That's so important. Now, come a little closer, but as I'm lifting some things, as close I am to the body of my truck. If you care about body panels, understand that the jack actually lifts on an arc, right? It doesn't just lift straight up and down, it lifts on an arc. So the higher up you go, the closer to the body panel this jack is going to get until eventually it hits it. So if I have to go really high, I'm going to point that foot further in before I start so that it keeps the top of the Now that I'm lifting, right, I can't move this truck anymore or this jack. So we've got the tire off the ground. If I was stuck in a hole, I could very easily grab a traction mat. and put it under the tire, now I could drive out of wherever I'm stuck. This is where jacks get dangerous, okay? Sarah's stepping back. We're gonna control it. Open palms, right? Don't try to just do your fingertips right here because you'll end up getting pinched. Open palm, smack the jack down, right? The directional lever to the down position. Now with it in the down position, Remember what I said, it holds the load until I start to lower. But remember before where I was lifting the weight here, notice there's no weight. I'm gonna use my right hand, but as I am back here, hand up top, when I click this jack down, now I'm controlling the load all the way up, okay? Until it gets to the top click. Once it reaches that top click, I can start the direction down again, but again, no weight until I hit that click. Now I'm controlling that weight all the way up. What happens is people aren't ready for that and or they've got their hand underneath or they drop the handle and it hits that click and now it goes into just the handle slap and it's up, down, up, down, up, down until the jack gets all the way down at the ground. So make sure you control it the whole way down. And once the weight's off, the jack drops to the ground. You put it back in the upright position. And when we go to lay the jack on the ground before we clean up, we always lay the jack with the climbing pins facing up. Reason being is those climbing pins, we don't want to shove them back down in the mud or anything like that. But that's a very quick, easy way. Uh, to get unstuck, your tire's in a hole, or even if your differential's caught on a rock, right? I just changed the ground clearance of this truck by lifting it up and putting something underneath of it. So we call that process just a jack and stack. So where with a ARB jack, you can do that because you can still lift a tire in a fairly similar fashion. You can do a jack and stack with both types. Some of the things that I could have done with the high lift jack, and again, I would probably only do this in a class because I can't give you all of my secrets, but I can lift that tire off and with a good driver, they can actually drive off that, that high lift jack like a pole vaulter. Works extremely well if you're high center. I can also do what they call a jack and cast where I can lift up the center of the vehicle from like a toe hitch in the rear or somewhere in the center in the front if I'm high centered in ruts, I can lift it up and I can shove the truck off the jack to get out of those ruts. So we call that a jack and cast. So we can do a jack and stack, a jack and cast, a jack and drive where we drive off the jack, or we can use the jack to change the tire. Really, the high lift jack is the Swiss Army knife of off-road recovery. There's just a ton of stuff we can do with it. So if I have to choose one tool to carry when I go off-road for recovery, it is the high-lift jack. But safety-wise, 
And if you already have a winch, you already have a ton of other recovery gear and you don't need a jack, look at the ARB jack for the safety. Remember, you maybe can use the high lift jack, but maybe everyone in your vehicle can't. And if something happens to you and you get hurt and it happens and they need to recover the vehicle or change a tire, they may need a way to do that. All right. That's our demo for this evening. Um, Al, do you have any questions for us? So, Mike, Cheryl yes. Taylor. Cheryl was one of our weekly prize winners a while back. I remember right, she's from Destin, Florida, maybe. She wants to know if the ARB jack is as heavy as the high lift stream jack. So, um, it is. I, it is lighter than the 60 inch high lift extreme jack um but the weight savings is a little somewhat negligible it is easier to store because of its smaller size and the fact it expands right so it's a little bit easier to store and it is a bit lighter but not a ton okay good doug callis has another question he's concerned about the safety issue of that handle popping up and smacking me in the head. Right. So My, you noticed, you noticed uh, in the when you were when you were doing the high lift, our audio was breaking up a little bit. When you were working on the rear tire, even though yeah. you illustrated it there, you might have missed it. So go over that again. Yeah, so um always keeping your hand on top of that handle. Uh, where most of the horror stories with the high lift jack comes from is when it's in the down position and people are not ready for that opposite weight transfer where you're actually pushing down weight when you're lifting. When you're lowering it, you go down, you hit that click and all that weight's coming back up. So, you know, people get um, lackadaisical about how they control that handle. Um, so you always keep your hand on top of that handle so you have positive control of it. And that way you can control that weight and it won't pop out um, and start doing the handle slap up and down. As, if you notice, I always kept my hand positioned on top. I didn't put it underneath the handle. I kept it on top and kept a firm grip on it. Um, not, you know, two or three fingers. I kept my whole hand wrapped around it to lower it down. Okay, the next question came from Cody Boone. It says, for those pretty bottle body panels, like on your truck, um, the high lift may make a rubber spacer to use they do. like that. They and, do. And he also said that you might be a rubber mat or a floor mat. Yeah. So you can, you can use a, you know, something like a carpet floor mat or rubber floor mat. Um, they do have a, um, the handle keeper. I've got one here. Actually, it's not the high lift brand, but you can see it goes down over the handle and this end goes over the bar. If you turn it around, it will help keep it off the body, um, but uh, you know, with the way the way vehicles are made now, you're still going to do some damage. But in in the event that uh, something was to happen and you had to do it, yeah, it would certainly protect the body panel. But they're so flimsy now with newer vehicles, it'll still put a dent. Cody continues to have questions. He wants to know the recommendations for extended base plate. So um, extended base plates for soft soil, basically a larger footprint. Um, high lift makes a good one. And actually, ARB makes a good one that works for both the high lift and the ARB jack. I do uh, prefer either one of those if you're going to carry one because you can use it as a tire chalk. The way they're designed, they're kind of curved and you can get it, get it behind or in front of a tire to prevent it rolling. So they are nice to have. If you don't have something like that, um, you know, a nice thick, uh, like a two by 10 or something like that can help. Um, but in a pinch, again, a couple of floor mats in mud or sand can help it from sinking also. Um, but anything that's going to make it better, I actually have one um, that uh, Scott Fields had made. It's just a 10 by 10 piece of metal with a little welded square on there that you can put the foot into. It works great. Okay. And just to sort of support your safety thing. A.D. Wade said, what about that triangle of death? Yeah, so anywhere between the handle and the bar, or the standard as some people call it, you've got to stay out of that zone. That is where people get hurt because the high lift handle flies back up if it slips out of your hand and you're not controlling it. 
And that's where the damage can come from. I've seen um, even uh, professional trainers, I've seen the handle slip out of their hand because they were tired and end of the day and come up and pop them in the jaw and, you know, they get the little cartoon bump that comes out. So keeping your body outside of that triangle of death or the, I call it the no-no zone, the no-go zone there, staying out of there is super important. That's why you notice I set my feet up so it actually turn my body away from it. Uh, it makes it easier to manage that. VB Tom, why not use a bottle jack? Well, if you were changing a tire and you're on, you know, nice, clean ground, yeah, bottle jack's perfectly fine for changing a tire. Um, you know, you can get bottle jack spacers. There's even a company that makes uh, something called the Safety Jack that is an extended bottle jack that works extremely well for that. But when you, once you get into recovery situations, you're going to need something like a high lift jack or an ARB jack. If you want to do a jack and stack or something along those lines um, to get off of being high centered, yeah, you, you're you going to need a high lift jack. I don't like getting underneath my vehicle in the mud, um, so I tend to use a high lift jack, and I feel pretty confident that I can use it. Um, so I don't worry about that too much. Uh, but if you're just you know changing a tire, and you're on nice flat ground, if you're not in a real dirty, muddy area, you can most definitely use a bottle jack, and it is going to be safer if you're on stable ground. If you're on soft ground, it could be dangerous as you're trying to get the, the bottle jack positioned underneath the vehicle. Okay. Yvonne and Michael Cuffey, who are members of the best off-roading club in the South, Trick and Track, wants to know, how do you keep the jack clean? You don't. You okay. do not keep it clean. Um, so what I do uh, is I carry like from um, advanced auto parts or something like that, those little tiny bottles of uh, WD-40. And right before I use the jack, I give I, the whole climbing pin section and upper and lower runner. I spray that whole section down liberally to wash everything off and get it nice and lubricated. Um, you can try to use things like dry lube, silicone lube, things like that. But um, if you're in dusty environments, uh, it's not going to help. You can put a boot on it. That'll help some, but you should still lubricate that running gear before you use it anyway. Okay, good. Now, how about reminding us about the weight limits for the ARB guy? So the ARB jack can lift up to 4,400 pounds. And a lot of people say, well, my vehicle weighs, you know, 6,500 pounds. My vehicle weighs, you know, 68 or 7,200 pounds. And you see it lifted, it fine. Remember, most of the time you're only lifting a quarter to half the weight of your vehicle. So you're not lifting the full load because you're not lifting the vehicle up in the air. You're only lifting a corner of it. So about a quarter of the load. Or if you lift from like a slider and you're lifting two tires off, you're lifting about half the load. So you're going to be well within the capacities of the jack. Okay, good. I think maybe the last question was from a guy called Al Sweeney. <laughs> Half the folks probably listening tonight have a JK. Many of them may have a JK4 or something other than a Rubicon with a steel bumper. How do you use a high lift jack? If you don't have some place to lift from, like a bumper or um, some a steel area that you can lift from, uh, sliders or something like that, you're not going to be able to change a tire with it, but you can still do recovery. You can still lift using a soft shackle around the tire like I showed or that lift mate um, that, I, that I talked about. You can find it on High Lift's website. Uh, you can still lift a tire and do a jack and stack or a jack and drive. Um, if you have a tow hitch in the rear, you can lift from that if you have one of those uh, little receiver hitches. You can put that in there in a bow shackle or a soft shackle in it and lift from there. Just remember, you're lifting two tires, so you're going to be a little less stable. Okay. So, Jay, do you know a guy named Papa Smurf? Papa Smurf, yes. Okay. He says he carries a repair kit in his toolbox. Right, yes. Section. Let's talk about YouTube for a minute. There's a video out on YouTube that was produced many years ago by Southern Association on use of high lift jacks. It's uh, it goes in the, in, in some areas in more detail than might went into tonight. So go to the Southern Four Wheel Drive Association YouTube channel 
and on that watch that video. Make sure that if you go to YouTube and you watch videos, or tonight as you're watching this video, make sure you share it with your mom, dad, brother, sister, significant other, dog's hairdresser, your hairdresser, your tax accountant. I don't care. Share it. And does Mark's and Off-Road Adventures have anything coming up in the next week or two? Yes. So next week we have uh, what we're calling uh, Off-Road Essentials, a uh, series of seminars at Asheville Vehicle Outfitters on Wednesday night from 7 to 9. Um, and then uh, we've got uh, some classes coming up you'll be able to find on our website at www.morrisonsoutdooradventures.com. Um, and obviously, you can find us on Facebook, um, Morrison's Outdoor Adventures, or Instagram, Morrison's Outdoor Adventures. If you have questions, send us a message, and we'll let you know when our next class is coming up. We will actually be at Wind Rock this weekend um, guiding a trail ride. Well, good. So, Jay, you want to close it out here? Say goodbye to everybody? Yeah, I just want to remind everybody, Dixie Run, October 2nd through 4th. It's going to be at Wind Rock Park, and I look forward to seeing everybody there. We need you. We need your volunteer support. We need you uh, to help out with uh, raffle prizes if you can't. We just need you there. Very good. And we're going to end it here. I'll remind everybody, if you quickly go comment, I prefer your choice, KM2 or KM3 tires. You'll be entered to win that set of tires. So, I would uh, like I would like to do a special shout out to BFG for being a great sponsor and supporter of Southern. They have been a supporter of Southern for almost thirty. I think from the very beginning. I think they're the longest sponsor of Southern Four Wheel Drive Association. They have been there since the very beginning. They are still there. They're still helping us out. And I want to thank BFG because without them, we wouldn't be able to have these tires to give away and we wouldn't be able to have tires to give away at Dixie Run and, and other stuff. So thank you so much to BFG and Warren and all the other big sponsors, Clemson, et cetera. I'm, I know I can't name everybody, but if you've ever been a sponsor, thank you. Okay. Let's say good night, guys. Good night. Night. <laughs>